Welcome everybody to I the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. So today I'm celebrating uh, purchasing a beautiful new oracle deck by Blue Angel Publishing called the Goddess Within Oracle. You can see three of the cards there by having a goddess divine feminine themed reading. So today's pick a card is going to be looking at messages from three goddesses to you of blessing, healing, change, whatever they want to talk to you about. So one of the goddesses is here. I shuffled and asked spirit for one of the goddesses for each pile. There are two others under there. And we also have some astrology cards to sort of see the aspect or aspects or areas in life in particular that the messages are coming about. And then we'll use tarot and some other oracles to get some more information about it. So this is, this is getting in touch with your creativity, your nurturing, your caring, your healing, all of those sort of energies and so forth. Just quickly, in terms of creativity and, and all of that kind of thing, before I go into the pile choice, I just want to let everybody know who doesn't know that if you want to support this channel outside of this channel, I now have a Patreon, so that has exclusive benefits and content. If you want to do that, no pressure meant, but if you do, the link is in the description box below. And also with my Etsy store where you can get private readings, I now have a tarot course, which is a set of videos. If you are interested in learning how I read and, and how I develop my tarot skill. And there is also tarot mentoring and mentoring with tarot programs for anybody who wants a more intensive sort of connection and building of skills, life purpose or whatever it is that you might want to explore. So just every once in a while, I want to let people know that's there. I don't want to belabor it too much and certainly don't feel pressured on any level. But if any of that interests you, check out the links in the description box below. Okay, so in terms of this reading, as I say, I did shuffle and ask Spirit for at least one goddess that was imp important to messages. So for pile number one, we have Aphrodite. For pile number two, we have Demeter or Demeter. And for pile number three, we have Persephone. I should say, just, just when I put these down, some of you may be drawn to both two and three because there is a direct connection between Demeter and Persephone, given that Dem Demeter or Demeter was Persephone's mother. <laughs> so, but but you, don't, you don't have to, but it just, it just interested me that those two came out, but in different piles. So uh, make of that what you will. You can, of course, go to more than one reading. That's obvious from what I just said, if you feel drawn that way. But when you know what reading or readings you want to go to, I have the timestamps in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, Pile 1, to your reading. So you came to the reading with Aphrodite, which we have here. The two other goddesses that have a message for you, that we may find these are connected or they might be quite separate, are Isis, uh, an Egyptian goddess, and Artemis, a, another of the Greek or Roman goddesses. And I've got here Black Moon Astrology to get a bit of a sense about the aspect or energy around the message in your aspect of your life or whatever that else that might be. So it interests me because I think there could be some connection here. The, the one way that I think there could be a connection between the three readings is if you have come to this and you are looking for some sort of concept about your career, your, your, your position in the world, your vocation, something like that, your ambition, then I definitely think the three are connected. Otherwise, I think they're separate. So I'm going to kind of talk about them in both ways. But the reason, firstly, before going into the goddesses themselves, that I think they could be connected through career is because of the 10th house here. And when we have Aries, Aries is a energy that is about ambition, quite often. So there could be a kind of a leadership, a stepping up sort of energy here, a stepping into your vocation, stepping into your personal brand, but possibly something that needs to be recovered, refound, reclaimed to do it. Um, with the void, of course, moon missing. This is this is where sometimes the things have gone off course or been a bit lost, and it could be in the ambition towards your vocation, and therefore the energies of the the goddesses and their messages may give us a bit of a clue. So if I was talking about that first, and then I'll go back to if this might be separate, but if I was thinking that this is a message from these goddesses about you getting back on course for something in your career, your vocation, your ambition, your personal brand, whatever it might be. It's very interesting that we had Isis connecting to Void, of course, because Isis is the Egyptian goddess who had to go and find the various scattered and broken up parts of Os Osiris and bring him back together again so then they would have their child Horus. So 
there is a sense of searching for something. So I think regardless of whether this is about career or whether it's something you know, that is, is a separate message, and we may get a better idea about that when we look at tarot, there is an energy here with Isis saying that there is something missing in your life, something lost in your life, something that's gone a little bit off course. And I think the message will be how to find that because, of course, the promise of Isis was that she did find Osiris and she did bring him back together again. And they had, as I say, Horus and, and took the sort of like the, the, the legacy onwards and so forth. So there's something here about finding something that's lost or reclaiming something that's lost. If it's around a career, it may have to do with a sense of self, self-love, passion, and even the beauty of an ambition. Because Aphrodite is, of course, the goddess of love. So that certainly is a suggestion about what you love, what you find passionate. She's often a symbol of self-esteem and self-love. And I think with Aries, I am. If you have been feeling off course around your career or your personal brand, this may be Aphrodite wanting to bring you a message of how to get back on course and to be passionate about who you are and confident in who you are. And then Artemis is the ultimate strategist. She's incredibly good at focus, just like you can see there in terms of the way she's using her arrow. And that focus is very much on who you are in the world. So even if these things are different, even if you have not lost your way a bit, need to reclaim your ambition to, to get on focus, there is definitely a message from Artemis that has to do with how you should be in the who you should be and how you should be in the world to get the best strategic advantage. There is definitely a message from Aphrodite about reclaiming who you are and being passionate about who you are. And there's definitely a message from Isis, which is about getting back on course after something was lost or reclaiming something that was lost. So interesting. Let's see what else we get, because this might give us a bit of an idea how many of you have come here around the story that is chapter by chapter there and how many have come with three different messages. So we're going to use tarot. And for each goddess, I'm going to get, first of all, three cards for a bit more about the message, which will give us a bit of an idea how connected they are. Then I'm going to look at two cards for the gifts or blessings that will come with their message. And then we're going to have a last card for navigating through their message. So firstly... Three cards around Isis, around what needs to be refound, reclaimed. Ace of Cups. Death reversed. Well, that's very interesting with the with the symbolism of Osiris when Set tried to kill Osiris. So, but Set was actually resurrected effectively by. Isis and the Queen of Cups. Okay. This is something very close to your heart, something close to your emotional authenticity. For some of you, it may be a relationship. It may be a relationship which you felt had, had been lost to you, had gone. It could be reclaimed with this, getting back to the core of the heart and what was beautiful in it. It could have been a relationship. In this sort of situation, it could have been a relationship that's that's fallen by the wayside because of ambition. And this may be using Aphrodite as the kind of love energy, connecting the two, being able to do both, being able to reclaim it. But whatever this is, there is a decision that has either been avoided or there is something that almost fell away as though it wasn't even a lively energy anymore. But this is saying, Isis is here to say, and Isis is a queen, you're a queen here. You know, you, you are able to reclaim something that was very precious to you. So whatever this is, it's a promise that that will occur after it appeared to have departed. It's actually, it can be resurrected. So it's a very strong blessing saying something you feel you lost or that you need to reclaim, you can do it. And it's your emotional authenticity that will help you do that. So then let's see the message from Aphrodite, because I can see a very strong connection between the Queen of Cups and Aphrodite. So I think for many of you, these two at least are connected, even if the third one isn't. So around Aphrodite, Nine of Wands reversed, Queen of Swords, oh, that's interesting, Seven of Wands. Okay, I do think that for most of you, whether it's around love that somehow has an impact on your, how you're seen in the world or whether it's around career, ambition or whatever. And I think more often than not, it's probably the latter. This, this is saying that you, you are getting your sense of self back in an environment that's very tricky, that's very sensitive and very critical. 
but this is calling you to have the ambition and the fire in the belly again, that you are going to succeed. So if you had felt like if this was a recipe of I had a lot of ambition once, I knew who I wanted to be, but somehow I got lost along the way. It's saying some ambition you've always had can be resurrected. It's close to your heart and you're ready to do it. You've been in an environment where that's difficult and critical, but if you step up now and believe in yourself, you can do it. And then we have Artemis for the strategy. So let's see what we get there. King of Swords reversed. Two of Swords. Page of Swords. Okay, all right. And what this is saying here, I do think that for most of you, this has got something to do with career ambition, creativity that you're getting, something you're getting out in the world, something practical. Because this is saying that why you need to use your strategy is what has caused this has been somebody who's tried to stop you being able to make decisions for yourself, but you are ready to speak up. You know what you're going to do. So something unfair happened, something that caused this. This is very much like the ISIS thing. We're set, you know, sort of trying to kill Osiris. Something something got in the way of an ambition you had, a dream you had, but it is eminently able to be brought back. And if you focus your strategy and your communication on not letting people block your decision making or make you doubt your decision making, you're going to be able to take this out in the world. And this is an intellectual decision. The thing that is bringing you back to life is a re, re emergence of your heart and, and the fact that it is possible, knowing in your heart it's possible. But you're, you've been in a very critical environment, a very critical, difficult environment. And it's just calling on you to believe in yourself again and take your message forward that you're ready to do that. So let's see two cards for each of these for gifts that the, the, the goddesses are bringing you to, to deal with this. So Isis, the gifts that she's bringing you are Six of Pentacles, the Emperor, a real opportunity for someone to see your value and your worth. Like it, whether it's like a new offer from a new boss, a new job, a new patron or something, something is coming. You've, you've been in this wrong environment, this wrong energy, but something is coming. You are going to get the support, the material support and the support of the world to do this. That you are, you are rising with that. So then Aphrodite's gift to you is Six of Wands reversed, the world reversed. Remembering that this is not, by no means over. If they've been trying to critique you or, or hold you back, and not recognize you, it's not over, baby. You're ready to rise. <laughs> she's 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 literally, you're coming up in the conscious cell, you're going to show yourself. This is not, if people thought they bested you, more fool them. And then the gift from Artemis. Eight of Pentacles reversed. Two of Pentacles reversed. Okay. I'm getting a very strong thing about this. Eight of Pentacles reversed to me is often that you've mastered something. You don't need the rules of others. So you have risen above those that, that judged you. The second thing is that you don't necessarily make a choice. You don't have to make a choice. You know, you're just going to naturally do something different new. But I also think with the Two of Pentacles that you're not second best. I think someone's tried to tell you you were second best. You are now going to be in a position where someone says the exact opposite all the circumstances show you the exact opposite. Because you've worked it out, you've got the strategy. No more, no more being second. No more being second. You know, you, as I say, you're about to rise and that's going to be recognised. So that's good. Now, if it was something about a love relationship, you're not going to be second in a love relationship either. Whatever this was, but there's something very visible about this. If it's not, if it's not career, there's something very visible. So it might be that you are coming into a relationship with someone who it, there is, is a visibility, like a power couple type of energy. If you felt you know, love was lost to you or that you, your dreams of what you could have had in terms of love, it's going to come true. Either way, it's going to come true. This is a very powerful, positive message, I have to say. So what I also wanted to do was bring it together with the elements. So I feel that with goddess energy... There is that connection to the earth. There is a connection to all the elements, to elemental magic, all of that sort of thing. So I have different decks to show different elements just to see what else the goddesses are wanting to say to you. So firstly, and I'm just going to do one card for each element. So it's it's the combined 
messages of Isis, Aphrodite and Artemis here. So with the Water Alchemy deck, I want to get a sense about the emotional importance of this, these messages and blessings that they're bringing you. Wave. Oh, look at her. She's about to rise on the wave. In fact, she is the wave. This is the thing. This is, this is whether it is to, to be the first and the one who's chosen in love or whether it's to be, and I think for most of you, it's to be you know, really stepping up, really getting somewhere with your ambition, with who you want to be in the world. You're no longer being, being uh, buffeted by the wave. You are the wave. You're ready to rise. That's an incredibly beautiful energy. Allow that to happen. Just believe in it. Just understand that this can occur. The emotional energy should be towards triumph. Then we have air. I'm looking at an archangel energy for air. So this is kind of like what we think about things. Oh, wow. Caribbean. Yeah, power. Power, all right. Really, like the, the, the cherubim, which is Caribbean here, is, is a representation of very close to the throne of God, very powerful, very strong at bringing in one's sense of self. So you should believe in your power. Like it, it, and it's interesting that like I just naturally wanted to put air over there, which is, of course, where Artemis is. So I think like understanding the power of your mind and the power of your communication and that there is a purity to what you do, this is why it's going to work. This is why the goddesses are so, so keen on this. Then we look, so we've got water and air. Then we get earth. I'm looking, using the enchanted forest for that, getting to the earthy energy of a forest as a, a representation of life in this material world. Starlight. Don't slow down manifestation through hesitation or worry. Keep the faith and create light in the dark. The path of stars is made of the same energy. So yeah, you're bringing, you're bringing something down. You're downloading something. This is why it's so strong in that kind of air element. The air element and the earth element are working very, very well for you. So how you think and how you communicate are very, very key for this. And then we have the sort of wands, passion energy, action energy, all the stuff that would pick up the Aries I am with the color goddess cards. And we have, oh, wow, sunflower. Happiness, joy, play, things are getting so much better. And there's a very yellowy sort of energy here. It's all about self-esteem. That's what makes sense. It's like something tried to affect your self-esteem, but you are rising above this rapidly and very, very successfully. And it's meant to be joyful. So this is a, this is a healing and a blessing message about you finally reclaiming something you thought was lost and moving forward very rapidly and very strategically. So that's very, very powerful. So let's also ask the stars what guidance they have for you. We have third quarter moon, the release, out with the old and bad and in with the new. Yeah, there's something that didn't work. There's something that didn't work. There was something that was actually very unfair very critical or manipulative, but it's moving out. You're, you're actually reclaiming what was always meant to be yours and moving very rapidly towards that. Taurus, the good life. Yeah, you're meant to have the good life. It's meant to be material. There's something very material. I do think there's something very material about this. I think for most of you, it is about your know, career, your status in the world, that kind of thing, your ambition. If it is about love, I think it's directing you towards some sort of power couple status or something. There will be a connection between the two things. Who you are in the world will be connected in some way with the love as well. We have Aries again. Yeah, your ambition. Be ambitious. Anybody tried to tell you not to be, like, just don't listen to them. You're meant to be ambitious. You're supposed to lead. You're meant to be first with something. And this is also saying that the air and the fire are very important here. So, so this sort of sense of, of being close to, to divine inspiration and that their happiness, it's very, very important to focus on those elements. And Uranus, yeah, change. Change is coming. Change is rapid. Whatever was old is gone. This is, this is a very powerful energy for you, Pile One. You're meant to sort of really rise with this. I don't think anything can stop you, really. Just like this wave is kind of unstoppable. So 
if that's the message that the goddesses wanted to bring to you, I want to finish with a message that a god might bring to you or a titan. So we, we've started with a lot of divine feminine energy here. Let's also get an answer from the divine masculine just to bring this into balance for you. Wow, and we get Ganesha, the ultimate the ultimate god of success and removing obstacles. So this message has been pretty clear all the way through and pretty simple. It's, it's basically that something, whether it's in love or in career or creativity or whatever it is that you want to have out in the world, something did seem to be lost, did seem to have been, or you were put down or not believed in or not heard, but you are definitely about to rise. You've understood it. You're reclaiming your sense of self and you're reclaiming your strategy and your voice in some way. And as a result, you're going to bring in good fortune. You're going to bring in a lot of power and energy. You're going to remove the obstacles and you're going to get you know, patrons and supporters rather than detractors. So I think this is a lovely message. I'm so happy. And it's a simple one. It's a relatively quick reading because it's simple to the point and it's just very direct. So the goddesses want you to, to have good cheer because things are about to get a hell of a lot better for you, part one. I hope that you've enjoyed this reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome part two to your reading. So you came to the reading with Demeter and the other two goddesses that are stepping forward with a message. One is Sekhmet from ancient Egypt and one is Esan Talahi. I may not be pronouncing that correctly at all. She's a Navajo goddess. What's really interesting in this is, as I said in the introduction, there might be some connection between pole two and pole three, and I've yet to do pole three, so I don't know how this is going to play out. But what I find really interesting is that the Demeter Persephone story is, of course, Persephone is the daughter of Demeter. She's abducted into, into the underworld. Demeter has to bargain to get her back. That's why we have the seasons in winter, you know, like autumn and winter. She's down in the underworld the rest of the time she's up on Earth. So there's a, there's a connection between the daughter energy, so in a sense the younger woman energy, and her, her descent into the underworld and the, the kind of almost maturation process associated with that. And Estantalehi, and, and again, I, I, for, forgive me if you know how to pronounce that and I'm, I'm mispronouncing it, but she is actually a, a goddess of the female sort of puberty and rites of passage and creativity. So in, in, in a way, it's two different systems and it's two different stories, obviously. But there's a, there's a kind of a through line. And then the other thing that has a through line between this is we have Sekhmet here. Now, she is a goddess, um, kind of a, almost a divine counterpart, almost of Ra to some degree in the sense of level of, of power. But she... She had a lot of rage within, you know, there was a lot of potentially destructive energy, but her love energy, in fact, um, mitigated that. So she's, she's about rage and love and, and how you bring things into balance and how you understand your own power and bring it into balance. And when we look at the Black Moon Astrology, with her we have Saturn Return Age, which is about maturation. This is about rites of passage. Demeter is the mother. So, and the creative cycle. Then when we have a look at how Demeter, so if Sekhmet is about some the maturation of kind of the balance of destructive rage energy and creative love energy, like how they balance together, then we have Demeter, who is the, the, the great creator, but who also had to bargain for her own daughter. I mean, as I say, that's not Persephone, but that kind of energy. With your destiny, there's something destined about a creation that comes from the knowledge of the maturation process. Like that's what it's talking about. I think that so far, I think that the goddesses are coming together with one particular message rather than separate messages. We will see what else we get. But I feel that there is something here. If you come to the right thing, you have a creative energy. Whether it's like you're a creator in a creative artist sense or whether it's it literally is about wanting to sort of start a family, find the right sort of partner to start a family, get the right sort of you know, dietary and health regime to do it, or whether it's some other creative force within you, or whether it's finding love that that is sustaining and natural and destined, like it could be that as well. 
that you're ready to do that. You've, you've, you know, like maybe had some fun, gone out a bit, <coughs> and now it's time to sort of settle down. There's some energy in here where there is a kind of a rage where maybe something didn't work out or or that you felt that you weren't seen or you felt that something you might have felt that your youth was stolen from you on some level and now you're wanting to create something else. There's, there's some energy here where it's channeling the kind of potential destructive rage into creative love in a mature way, having understood your destiny and knowing, therefore, what that journey was like. Because I think there's almost like something in what this goddess is talking about is the journey that kind of, it's almost like this came first, then Sekhmet, then Demeter. But they're talking to you about having gone through a rite of passage that matured you so that you are now a, a great creator, and that's what your destiny is. It's very interesting. So it could it could play out in any number of ways, but but there is a kind of a sense of, a difficulty, like I think most of you may have had like you know, difficult adolescence, um, difficult first loves, difficult sort of first creative activity, whatever it is. But there's a lot of power. And once it came into maturation, like it's almost like, like an, I, a good way of exp, you know, describing this is almost like someone who was a child prodigy. And like somehow that was exploited or whatever. There was a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom that came out of doing it, but it was almost like it was exploited in some way. Therefore, there is rage, but bringing that rage to maturation creates the real creator, that kind of energy. Very interesting. So let's have a look and see with tarot. So I'm going to draw three cards for each goddess first to see a little bit more about the message they're bringing. I'll then draw two for the gifts that they're bringing with that message, and then I'll draw one for the navigation energy to, to make the most of it. So firstly, Sekhmet, this sort of combination of destructiveness with, with love and passion that is can only really, that kind of power can only really be ha handled with maturity. So what is her message to you? Ten of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, the High Priestess reversed. So, I think what she's saying here is that if some of this is about passion and love, and it could be because there's a highly kind of like passionate energy to all of this, you know, all, all of the all the female goddess energies here have that in one form or another. I think she's saying that that you're ready for the mature love that is realistic. So this could even be from moving kind of like from childish idealistic sort of ideas about, you know, passion to something that is mature. It could be bringing in, you know, very long-term love. That's what's meant to happen. And you're ready to do that now because you've kind of learnt the lessons. Um, but whatever it is, she's saying that there is something of the heart here, but it's, it's, it's going to have a long-standing, it's not destructive. Like whatever the destructive energy was with her, it's turned around by love. But there's a there is a sense of realism. And this is why I think this is why I feel like it goes that, that, and then that, because it's like whatever this is about, whatever rite of passage occurred here, you learnt something. Therefore you know there's a there's a kind of a knowledge that then allows something more long standing. So I might go to that one next, actually. I'll do Demeter last, I think. So see, almost see the precursor. I feel like this is the thing that led to this. So let's see what S. Santale he wants to say to you. Six of Swords, Five of Swords, Nine of Swords reversed. I feel like she's saying what you know here from whatever this was. This was a rite of passage in some way. You went through something that taught you something, matured you, maybe even matured you before your time, depending upon what age you are. But she is saying that there is a peace in letting go of what no longer serves. Because if you try and hide, hold on and battle too much, then, then you just get caught. You can't move forward. So she is saying that there was something, there was some aha moment about something. Like it almost feels like there was a relationship maybe that was very, very pivotal and very form, formative. But you, you got to the point of knowing you have to let that go. And that then allows something else in that's bigger 
but they, there was like it, there was something very important about it and if it wasn't a love relationship it's something that was important to the way that you viewed the world the way you communicated in the world with all the swords cards there your beliefs about the world but you had to get to that point where you were comfortable to move away from it rather than keep holding on to something that had outlived its its utility you, you have a knowledge it's like it's like the loss of innocence in a way once you've lost it it's gone but you can't get it back but then nevertheless it does bring you to this sort of maturity but there might be a process involved in this where you feel angry about it but the the maturity comes when you realize it's actually bringing in something better which then brings us to your destiny yod with demeter which is the great creator so what does she want to say to you Nine of Wands, Six of Wands, Seven of Cups. The dream is attainable. You're closer to what you want now than you think. You will be recognised for having gone through this. And, and the dream, the dream is there. You're closer to the dream than you think because it's your destiny. So if this, whatever this was, felt painful to let go of because it was almost like the dreams of the young, and this could happen at any age. I'm talking about kind of like almost the maturity of the dream. You had to be prepared to move on, let that go and take the knowledge and and re, to bring this in, to, to know that you could make something more long lasting. And it is absolutely closer than you think. And you are going to be recognized for what you've done. So I might go one, two, three here in looking at the, the gifts, because I do think this one almost came first. So let's see the gifts that the Navajo goddess was bringing you to, to give you this aha moment that I think mightn't have been easy, might have been a bit painful to, to, to realise. So the gift, three of swords. Yeah, wow, it's, it's really king of wands. Okay, for some of you, this definitely was a relationship that was wrong for you. It might have been incredibly passionate with the king of wands, but it wasn't the right one. There needed to be a separation. If it wasn't a relationship, then there was an idea, a creative thing that had maybe reached all its potential was going to be. You might have thought it was going to be the big thing, but in fact, the big thing is later and you had to let go of it. This was a message of understanding it was necessary to let something go. And that was a blessing for you. So then what does Sekhmet bring you as a blessing? Ace of Wands, I oh, see we go from the King of Wands to the Ace of Wands. Queen of Wands, and you become, okay. I think whatever this was, whatever this belief was, whatever this relationship, whatever it was, you went a certain way, but then you realised you had to leave because it was about the other person or other people's ideas or other people's creativity, whatever it was. You had to leave it because you had to gain your, your passion, your creativity, your sense of self. And that's the blessing that Sekhmet brings. That you don't have to do it with others. You can do it on your own. And that doesn't mean you necessarily have to be alone, but to bring in the love that's going to last, it has to be a love that you prefer to be with, not need to be with. It's almost like this might have been a need to. And if it's around sort of partnership or work, it's like you've got to be going towards the thing that is truly you, not something that is fitting in with all the ideas of others. Which brings you to your destiny which is very close. So what is the gifts that Demeter wants to bring? Two of Wands, Knight of Pentacles. Okay, if this was about relationship, it's to find the one that you can connect with and commit to. If it's about some sort of artistic vision or creativity, it's a creativity that you can be dedicated to because this is your destiny. So this is this is all about a maturation process. And I think that they want to say to you, well done, like well done. So one of the things I wanted to sort of ask the goddesses about is how the different elements, you know, earth, fire, air and water operate for this message that they're bringing. So we might just start, we we'll start with water first. So the emotional energy of this using the water alchemy deck. So I'm just going to draw one card for each element for the, the combined message here from the goddesses. So around the emotion, the love, the water element. Spring, yeah, it's time for something new. This, it's time for something new and almost bathing and clearing off the past to bring in the new. And again, spring. If you think of summer as the harvest, 
which is kind of always what I feel Demeter is there. Spring is very close to summer. Everything is very close to happening for you. So let's see around air and then, yeah, like over here, there's a lot about air. Like it's, it's belief structures using archangels for a sort of conceptual understanding of the belief energy, the, the thinking energy around this for you. Ah, Raphael, healing. So this is going to heal. There's some healing that has been necessary. And if it has been painful, you are going to heal. Raphael is here. You will understand by knowing the Aquarius energy of I know, that in itself is a healing thing. It, it propels you towards the new energy. So then I'm using the Enchanted Forest to get a sense about earth energy for you. So the, the grounded material energy of these messages. The key, all you do with ease and enthusiasm is the path to your goal. Actions are secondary. Make the energy within your primary focus. Do not underestimate the little joys. So you, I think the key, this has been the key. It may have been hard, but the key materially around all this, to bring in something that can last, something that you can be dedicated to, you're the key for that. And your maturity is the key for that. And maybe, you know, for some of you, it's little step by little step, but it's taking you exactly where you need. And as I say, you're closer than you think. And then if we look at fire, the sort of passion, the ambition, all of those sort of energies, we get brown, earth, formulation, seeds. Yeah, the new thing that you're growing. Like growing, just like Demeter here. You're actually getting your harvest ready. You're growing new energy in spring for the summer harvest. You're the key, step by step, not other people, not other people's beliefs, healing all of that where you thought that you were almost too young or too, you're just a learner to understand your actual true power and to move forward. Really lovely. Okay. And I think that is saying, that connects, that it's like there's something about the earth energy with brown there that is really important to understand, to see how close you are. Let's also get you some stars to guide you, pile two. Libra, getting things in balance. And like this, it's, there's a lot about philosophy here. Libra, Aquarius, you may be strongly air sign actually. This is why the rite of passage almost had to happen through the thought process first and the healing had to happen through the thought process first. But this is saying you're getting it nicely in balance. Taurus. The good life, you're meant to have the good life, the harvest, materially. This is why earth is important too, what you manifest as a result of this. Earth, yeah, earth again, yeah. Air and earth, they're the important things here. Water is, is, is important, but like it's what you're going to ground and what you're going to manifest and how you balance that that is, is key here. And 12th house, a lot of this is done privately, it's done at a very deep level. It also picks up that kind of underworld sort of energy of the rites of passage as well. Um, but it's done within. You don't necessarily have to show this to all the world. You just need to claim it for yourself. So to finish off, since we've been talking to the divine feminine and the goddesses, just want to call on the divine masculine and gods for any last message for you around this journey, I think, towards your destiny. Achilles, confidence. Okay, I think there's a double message here. One is that the, all you really do need is the confidence. He moves forward, incredible warrior. There's a sense of being able to do what you want. But it's also saying that maybe your confidence was your Achilles heel. That's why maybe before, this is why this was so important. You've got to move from wanting the, the agreement of others and the, the, the kind of validation of your way of thinking into just knowing and just moving forward. Because if you rely too much on other people, you don't come into your full maturation. So I think it's it's working on a double level. Understand your Achilles heel and that way you can protect it and you can move forward with confidence. So I hope that that resonates for you. It's pretty exciting, actually. It's a really, really nice message from the goddesses. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, part three, to your reading. And wow, this is interesting. So, as I said in the in the uh, introduction, the fact that we had Demeter and then Persephone was interesting. And some of you may have actually come to to more than one reading. Sorry, I just pause there for a second because somebody skyped me. So, um, 
I said before that you know there, there could be some sort of connection because of Persephone and Demeter, and there may well be because there is some connection, I think, between the two readings, but it, it doesn't have to be because there is actually a different slant on this one as well. This one is all about the underworld and the shadow. It's all about an understanding of that, I think, and the power of that and the power that you hold, particularly because of an incredibly sharp mind and how it gives you a sense of prophecy that is going to help you manifest something. <laughs> so it's very specific. So let me explain to you why I'm saying this. Like, firstly, we have Persephone. So she is called the Queen of the Underworld. She was the daughter of Zeus and Demeter and I think it's Zeus. And anyway, certainly the daughter of Demeter. And she was abducted by uh, Hades into the underworld and her mother Demeter bargained to get her back six months of the year. So she spends six months of the year in the underworld, having eaten of the pomegranate, so tasted of the fruits of the underworld. Then we have Inanna. Now, Inanna is a Sumerian goddess. She is a goddess of power and war and the heavens, so almost the other sort of side of things. But she is most famous for going down to the underworld <laughs> to challenge her sister Erish Kegel about the sort of darker energies in the underworld. And then we have Queen Maya, who was the mother of Buddha, and she had a prophetic dream of the birth of Buddha and the importance of that. And so she had this sort of sacred duty to protect something very, very important that she saw coming in. And we have earth element stability. We have two air elements here. So what I believe is we're looking at almost a formative philosophical understanding of your own power and your own clarity and your capacity to look in the shadow more than most people that is, is preparing you for some major role, some stewardship, some nurturing role, whatever it might be. For some of you, it may be a bit like Buddha's mother bringing in a very important child, earthing that into the world. But for others, it will be some form of nurturing protection support that comes from understanding the sort of more shadow elements of the world, bringing them into balance, communicating clearly. So I think many of you have some sort of messages here from the goddess about dealing with underworld type of matters, shadow matters, power matters, philosophy, the misuse of communication, any number of things, the misuse of the law, like all of that kind of stuff could come up with these elements. And that there is something very precious that you are meant to protect and ground as a result of that. So very interesting, very interesting connection. It's you. It's like it's, when I saw the Demeter and Persephone, it was kind of like, well, maybe, you know, this is the story of the kind of like the mother supporting the, the daughter and all that kind of thing. Maybe that'll come through again. But that's not what's coming through here. What's coming through here is your power and therefore the responsibility of it. So it's very interesting. So what we're going to do, we're going to use tarot and we're going to uh, have three cards first from each goddess for the nature of her message to you. Then we're going to have two cards for the blessing that comes with that message. And then we're going to have one card for the navigation going forward with it. So firstly, what is, what is the blessing that Queen Maya is bringing to you? The High Priestess. The Queen of Wands reversed. The Page of Wands. Okay, she is bringing you in touch with your spiritual understanding, your prophecy. You are, you are able to see, just as she did, foresee Buddha coming. You are able to foresee something. But she is giving it to you in a way to, to keep it secret and to, to hide it until its time is right. Because with the earth element, your main role is to protect something like protect the vision that you have. And it's not, it's not to, in a sense, be pushing yourself forward per se because she looked after Buddha. And it's not to say that you're lesser than whatever this message is, but it is saying that your protection and your balancing of it is to have the foresight to know that to be too showy or too out there with it could, could threaten it in some way. So this is bringing you a very true sense of the importance, the sort of sacredness of what what it is that you're protecting and meant to, to bring into the world. So what is Persephone saying? She who ate of the pomegranate, she who is, is 
in the underworld six months of the year. The Hermit reversed, the Moon, the Seven of Wands. Very, very psychic. This is, she's saying you're very, very psychic. And she's saying that while you need to protect almost the, the vision, because I think this is what it is, so with the, the Wands energy operating like the vision, you have to protect the vision. You will nevertheless be able to be a little bit clearer about this. You'll be able to take it forward at the right time. You will know when the right time is to come out of the shadows around it. And as I say, with Librate, how to do that in a balanced way, a fair way, a, a intellectually clear way. So she's, not, she's saying you won't be silent forever, but you do need to be silent for a while in whatever this is. And then Inanna, what she is saying to you. Ace of Cups, Six of Pentacles, Ten of Wands. This is all about responsibility. It really is. Because this is saying, this is going to be very true to your heart. She says, very true to your heart, just like a mother with her child. But you have a stewardship role, and it is a bit of a burden. But only you can do it. So so it's it's like... This will have its time. Its time is not right now, but you will know about it. So, so basically be aware that, that the time will come when you can come out from the underworld and talk about it. But when you do, what comes with it is a cause that is very dear to your heart and which will, will require energy. So let's see the blessing that each is bringing you. The blessing from Queen Maya for you. Three of Pentacles, the Judgment Reversed, the Blessing from Persephone, Nine of Swords, the Justice Reversed. Okay, there's a lot of it. A lot of you, this has got something to do with like politics, social causes, the justice system. There is something about all of that. And the Blessing from Inanna. Four of Cups, the devil. Yeah, this is, the blessing is is freedom from injustice, finding your calling, finding the right people at the right time, being able to, to lift the veil on all the, all the injustices that made people worried or nervous and so forth, and, and, and breaking through emotional blocks, breaking through emotional prisons. So, your message, your strength, your capacity of the shadow is going to be seen, going to be recognized. It will find its time. But for the moment, it's like the first thing is to find your people, I think. Then you will be able to really be open about your calling. So one card just for the navigation. Navigation from Queen Maya. Ace of Swords. Your mind. Your mind is the thing. Your inspiration is the thing. You're very, very, very clever. Navigation from Persephone. The chariot, it's not yet. It's coming. Your destiny is coming. It's not yet. But it, it, we, you will know when you're ready. When the idea comes through, you'll be able to move forward. The navigation from Inanna. The sun reversed. Yeah, it's, it's in the shadow of it. I think you have to be a little bit hidden with this, even when it's ready to come forward. But it's still your life path. But it's understanding. You're more of the underworld. You're more of, of what is hidden behind the scenes. You're like the power behind the throne. And I'm just saying, I'm not sure that I did the navigation for all the, the, the readings. I'm not sure now. I can't remember. But I definitely felt the need to do it for that one. Okay, so what we also want to do is we want to have a look at how the elements operate. So I'm going to look firstly at water. I'm going to do one card from four different decks, one card from each for the elements. So around the emotional energy of what these goddesses are talking to you about. Comet. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So this, this is a very much a downloaded thing. This is why you've got a Nana as well as Persephone. It it's comes from the heavens first. This is very strongly connected. I think some of you might have starseed connections or something like that because that, that is a sort of sense, even though it's, a, it's sort of like a water alchemy, this is, this is connecting to the celestial realm. So it's, it's very high order stuff, but that's why it's kind of precious. Speaking of the celestial realms, the next one was the air element. I'm looking at that in terms of, of an archangel. So an archangel energy around this. 
Anna, Anna Chio. Yeah, this is about justice. This is about community. This is about strength. It's definitely something like social justice associated with this in some way, in whatever that term means to you. And let's see how it earths then with the enchanted forest, the earth energy for you. Trust your feelings. You are unique. Your destiny is waiting for you to write your story and pave your own path. Follow your heart. Don't let others dictate who you should be. So, yeah, it's very much your path. But I think it's also maybe why you're meant to protect this a little bit because I think you might be in a, in a circumstance or an environment where people try and make you follow their path and this is very precious. You've got to protect it. And then your ambition, your creativity energy, your fire energy around this. Forest, elementals, fairies, magic. There, there's something very magical about you. And again, the forest is like being in the sort of like dark and mysterious realms. It's, you are very at home in that, more than most people are. The other thing I'm thinking too with this, with earth, earth and air are very important. So earth and water is very important actually. Air and air and um, and fire are kind of almost the context. I think the shadowy world where you need the, the sense of justice. But I feel like because it says trust your feelings, but this this is like the comet, there's something about, there is a very strong connection between a downloaded emotional energy and, and, and channeling that becomes very air-like, that actually gives you a strategy. That's why you can really trust your feelings. They're very on point. Okay, so let's see from the celestial realms again, let's see what the stars have to say to guide you. Third quarter, the release, out with the old. I think this came up for one of the others. It might have actually been the other one that connected this. I can't remember. But there is something old to let go of, to let this new energy in. You are a change agent, I think. Conjunction. There are the right connections at the right time. It may be a very precious person, a very precious relationship, something like that, much as you know the mother of Buddha with, with Buddha. But there's something that you're going to bring some things together. It's also maybe the conjunction of heaven and, and the underworld that's involved in this. Cancer, yeah, protective, family. Could have very strong family connections in some way. Could be that you're meant to sort of help break through generational sort of karma and things like that with that kind of energy. And fire, your creative energy as well. So I, I was saying that's important, but fire is important. Like I think all the elements are important here, but it's a fire within and it's a fire that you have to keep hidden until it's time for it to come out. There's something very, very precious about this, as I say. So to finish off, since we've been looking at what goddesses and divine feminine energy are bringing you, let's have a look at what the, the god or divine masculine energy wants to say as a kind of a coda to this set of messages. Green man, abundance, the forest, wow. Very, there's something very pagan actually about this, very deep, very pagan, very, very of nature. I think for some of you, because of these sort of like energies and then that, you know, you may well be involved in sort of spiritual paths that some people sort of think are dark and they're not dark. There's nothing dark about what you're doing. You're actually able to navigate the shadow and, and protect what is precious and it's very natural. But for some of you, you may have to keep this hidden because people would not understand it and would judge it. But it's very, it's very grounded and very magical. There's a deep magic in you. And, and that goes back to the prophecy energy as well too. So I hope that resonates for you. It's very interesting. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. <laughs>